At Zilla, we are dedicated to the innovation of caging, lighting, and equipment solutions that provide proper husbandry for your pet's long and happy life. To see our entire catalog, visit ZillaRules.com. What's up, Rattlers? So I am somewhere around Brisbane. I'm in Australia, I don't know exactly where I am, but I do know that I am at Scott and Ty Iper's house at Nature For You, and they deal with some of the most amazing monitor species here in Australia. And one of the monitors that they deal with is the Parentes. So come with me and let's go learn something about the Parentes here in Australia. I'm Dave Kaufman and I am obsessed with reptiles. And I have been since I was nine years old. 25 years later, I made a trilogy of award-winning movies about them. Now my life is all about touring the world in search of them in wild places and checking out some of the most awesome breeding facilities and reptile expos while I'm at it. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. All right, Scott, so let's start in the backyard here with this enclosure. Kind of give us a breakdown of how you set up this Parenti enclosure. There's a hide here that's always kept cool. So in the, hot, in the hottest part of the day, this remains cool. But also when it's really cold, it remains warm as well. So the way we access that hide is through a tub at the top here, which is under the, uh, under the leaf litter. We've got a log that goes to a tube, so the animal comes out. So this is effectively like a den for this parenti. And we found that this is really important for them to overwinter in, okay? And so that way then it keeps them in a, a safe, happy place. So I let him know that I'm coming in. The first thing I'll do is I'll give it a bit of a knock on the top so he knows that there's something happening. There he is. There's a parenti. So you can see that there. And then down here, that's the entrance out of his hide. There we go. Look at that beauty. There's a reason why these are my favorite monitors. All right, so how old is this one? Three years old. Wow. Three-year-old lizard. So about three is when they start to being sort of breeding size. Now, we were hoping at this point in time to be trying to breed Parentes for our first time this year. Unfortunately, uh, living in southeast Queensland, the feral wildlife had other ideas and we lost our female parenti to a cane toad. It was a pretty heartbreaking day to walk out to no longer see two parentis sunning themselves, to only find one. And then, um, then basically we opened up the tub and when we opened up the tub, this fellow here was actually cuddling his girlfriend who is now deceased. <sighs> now, did the hard thing and, and opened it up just to ensure what was actually caused that was the cause of death and it was a cane toad not much larger than a 50 cent piece now to give you an idea in the states that's probably uh, about an inch and a half across mm -hmm. it's pretty small and so we've learnt from that and so one of the things that we do now is we make sure that the animals that are going in are going into enclosures that are toad proof nice okay so you know, a wasted mistake would be one that we don't learn from. So you have this kind of uh, plastic box on the bottom of your cage here. Yeah. And that's what makes the cages toad proof. So the, t the toads can't climb up over that lip. And so we keep the grass low at the moment. It's a little bit higher than I'd like, but we make sure that the toads can't climb up and get into the enclosure. So when it comes time to feed these guys, what is the procedure? So big monitors get a bit excited about food. So one of the things that we've come up with are these feeding door situations. So the only way the animal will get fed is if it gets fed through one of these feeding doors. Okay, big monitor when it comes running at you is a fairly impressive thing. So by having a smaller enclosure, a smaller door for, to actually introduce food, when you go into the enclosure, the animal's not associating you with food and so you don't get that feeding response that we were seeing with those lace exactly. bottles earlier today. Yeah. So hang on a second, so there's the feeding door. So we open this up, as soon as we open this up, he's starting to think, well, I might get fed here, so. That's a very smart way to do it. But there's no way that I can get bitten by that lizard. Right.
so this is our our main reptile building um, and so from in here this is our storage area for most of the stuff that comes in now we can go straight into isolation um, or we can go into the main room so basically we're our quarantine we do not walk through all right and that way then we've actually got a proper quarantine set up all right Fantastic. now because we keep venomous snakes as the signs say this is one of the reasons why we have these glass windows on the door so yeah, we can that's... see what's going on before we walk in that's very smart okay so parenti's in here yes yes parenti's in here along with uh, a holy god i think yeah look at that everybody's been signing yeah well wow. we've got a few people there so I noticed you haven't asked me to sign that. Well, after you're yeah. done, you know, <laughs> then, then you can do it. Oh, there's Savannah. There's Savannah. Yeah. There's Danny there. Oh, yeah, Danny Mendez. So, uh, oh, very nice. Questel signed it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ryan Young. Did he just sign this just now? Yeah, he just signed it this morning. Oh, that's fantastic. You're a Ryan Young. Yeah. yeah. From over there, so he signed fantastic. it Fantastic. Well. And then, um, you know, some other herpers like Hal Cogger and... Um, what a great yeah, idea! It was a whole heap of things. So it's a bit like of a, uh, a bit of fun here on the door, you know. Oh, wow, look at this! Shares, this place is amazing. Okay, this is seriously one of the nicest perp facilities I've ever seen. I did not expect this when I came in here. Pan. Look at this freshy, a little cranky. Wow, this is fantastic, Scott. Uh, well, it's it's both done by myself and Ty as well. Yeah. So with our business nature for you, so we do wildlife demonstrations as right. well as uh, training and interaction with animals. So at the end of the day, we've got to make sure that our facilities are. Uh, at the at the top of their game wherever we can so we try to always try to improve things wherever we can. certainly looks like it's at the top of the game so yeah all right so where's the parentes in here so we've got a, a young animal here okay so the basically the the husbandry of the animals is set up that we've got uh temperature inside the room runs between 29 and 27 during the day and we've got a a heating point uh with a that's used by a tile that heats up that enclosure in a, in a single point that the animals can bask, okay? Um, when they get a little bit larger, we've also got UV lighting that they've got access to as well, as well as incandescent lighting. How important is UV lighting to a parenti? I think that UV lighting is incredibly important to all lizards. Uh, I think it's underrated in its use for, for snakes as well. Um, what we've found, we've actually got uh, double glazed windows in the ceiling, and we've found that a lot of our animals, where the sun hits their enclosures, they'll use that light that's hitting through. So whether it's the color temperature of that light or uh, some other thing that they're getting from that, the animals are actually preferring to interact with natural light wherever possible. So with the keeping of the parentes here, the first thing that we're doing, what we're trying to do is this is, the in inside cages is literally just a staging zone before we can move them outside. All right, so everybody knows that the Parenti is Australia's largest lizard. So what type of caging do you need for them? So not only is it a really large lizard, but it's also a really active lizard. And so activity means size, okay? We need to have big cages. So a hatchling Parenti's minimum cage size that we would put our animals into is an animal, a cage that's two feet by about three feet in depth and about two feet high. And so that still needs all its uh, requirements, as in UV lighting, incandescent lighting for the animal to thrive. After about eight months or so, we move them into a larger enclosure. The next size enclosure that we use is something that's got about 10 feet square, square feet as area in the bottom of that enclosure. Now to give you an idea, that enclosure is a, an enclosure that I can step into and I can outstretch my arms into. All right, so the animal's got lots and lots of room to move both up and down, but also from side to side as well. If the animals are cramped in two smaller enclosures, they come into contact with their urates, they come into contact with their poo, and as a result, the animals aren't as healthy as they should be. When we move them outside, they go into enclosures that have got 10 to 15 square meters per lizard in size, okay? 
They are big, active lizards that, unfortunately, as much as I'd like to say it, they're not suited for everybody. So here we have Parenti number three. Yeah, so this is Freckle, all right? So Freckle's halfway in age between spot outside and, and the little one inside here at the moment. So this is almost ready to go outside. So basically what will happen is, is as soon as this winter's over, all right, we'll move Freckle outside. They've got access from the ground all the way up by these branches, but the lighting itself is set up in such a way that the, the lights are behind protective cages. So we can slide that protective cage out and we can change the light bulb. So if a light happens to break inside that enclosure, we can ensure that we're not gonna get glass all through that enclosure as well. Now we've set up a, a energy efficient herp room to the best of our abilities using LED lighting and heating. Um, we're using natural lighting, a natural light, so there's double glazed windows in the roof that not only provides day and night cycles, but provides influence with moon cycling as well. So we're seeing a change between a new moon, which is no moon, and full moon. So in a full moon, our animals basically aren't doing anything. In a time where you've got new moon and it's all dark, we're seeing more movement and more activity as well. That is incredible. I don't know of any other herper anywhere in the world that is designing their caging facility around moon cycles. What is the difficulty level in raising up a baby parenti to adulthood? So I suppose the difference with a parenti versus uh, one of the other monitors is the size and the growth rate. Okay, so to give people an understanding, a parenti can go from this size, okay, to like the uh, like spot outside there in about 12 months. Now, that's a whole heap of rats and mice. Now, in Australia, a parenti sell for between $1,500 and $2,000 or so. Um, you're going to go through that in 12 months just in rodents alone. Exactly. Okay, so the expensive part of a parenti is not the purchase price of the parenti. It's actually feeding the bloody things. The other thing about working with these things is the love bite from a parenti. So this is only a little one and she's opened me up pretty good. So I might have to get stitches on it after this. After we finish film, we'll see how it goes. So what was happening is we were trying to put them on the log here and he totally nailed them. Look at that. Yikes. That one's pretty dirty, buddy. Yeah, that one's pretty dirty. So I've still got movement in my fingers, so I've got no issues with tendons. He cut pretty deep, but he didn't get down to the tendons, so... So she'll be right. But that is... That's life dealing with a parenti, with a giant monitor. Yeah, this is this is an occupational hazard, isn't it? And this is something you've got to remember, this is a baby lizard that's done this. Right. A baby lizard's done this, so... You know, worst case scenario, a big lizard like that, you can lose fingers or you can lose function in your hands. So if you've got a job that requires your hands, all right, you need to really sum up whether these things are a good idea. And that's one of the reasons why we utilize things like our food doors for our lizards, so we can minimize these sorts of mishaps. Yikes. All right, well, if we need to get you to the hospital, we need to get you to the hospital. Uh, I think we'll be all right. We're tough in Australia. There you go. Yeah, so instead of going to the doctors, we're just gonna glue it shut. Okay, so it's not too bad. Basically, you just give it a bit of a dab. Squeeze a bit of super glue on there like that. And it stings like a bitch because of the acetone in it. And then usually all I do is hold it, give it a bit of a tap, and then pull it together like so. And hopefully you don't glue your other fingers to your hand. And that is what keeping a parenti is all about. Now, can you imagine if this happened with a Eight oh. footer. Imagine it happened with Spot there. Yeah. You know, we'd be going to the hospital now and I'd be getting microtherapy back on my hands. Yikes. So they work. And you see now, you see how I'm not holding it anymore. You see how it's all held together now? Yep. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, you Aussies are tough. <laughs> <laughs> all good. All right, so now that your hand is all healed, talk to me a little bit about how you intend to breed these guys. Yeah, so. Obviously, we got a setback with the incident with the cane toad for us. That's thrown us back about two years or so. 
Um, what we'll be doing is, as soon as we come out of this winter, we'll be introducing, introducing Freckle into spot here. Um, we've had them x-rays, so we do know that they're a sexual pair, but hopefully it's going to be an interactive pair as well, and so we'll get some, uh, some matings and stuff like that. And as soon as we get the matings, we'll put, um, uh, put a nest box in there for them, and then uh, hopefully we'll get some eggs, and then a couple hundred days later, we'll have some baby parentes. So do you need to give them a, a season, any seasonal cues, cool down? Well, because we keep them outside, um, we're using our own climate as our cool down our cool down and warm-up period um, they come down into northern South Australia which actually gets down to, into the negatives uh, in Celsius of one or two degrees um, now what the parentes are utilizing in that environment are rock crevices so they don't get down quite as cool but our underground hide system is acting like that rock crevice so the animals are getting that proper cooling that um, that we know that they just need. naturally from being in the environment that they're native to. Yeah, of course. And sure. then the other option is, is obviously you've got day length and, and things like that is the same, as well as uh, our temperatures are fairly similar in that sense too. But um, yeah, we at Nature For You here are, um, certainly enjoy explaining to people about uh, different sorts of animals. We do interactive displays and things like that. And um, if you really, really like Spot or Freckle, we've actually got some really cool t-shirts that, uh, that have uh, some of our monitor lizards depicted on them. So go to the website www.wildlifedemonstrations.com and you can see some of those things there and hopefully buy a shirt from us. All right, Rattlers, so I'm gonna put the link to Nature For You in the description below. So this concludes my third trip to Australia. There is definitely gonna be a fourth. There are so many cool herps here, so many cool herpers here. I'm definitely coming back. So like this video, comment on this video, share this video, do all the stuff. So until the next adventure, Rattlers, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on. So as you can see, mine is so much better than Danny Mendez. <laughs> <laughs>